You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show where we talk about how Azure OpenAI Service and AI Builder is bringing new levels of efficiency and productivity. Stay tuned. What is up, my party people from around the world? Thank you for joining the AI show today. My name is Rob Nunez. It's been a while since I've been on the show, but I was here previously to talk about some things around AI Builder, a very, a very amazing tool and power platform. If you've never heard of it before, you'll hear about it again today. Seth could not be here today, but I am here to take the reins and introduce our guest today, who is joining us for the second time. So we have Ashish Batia, who works on the Power Automate team, who's going to be highlighting some of the new capabilities in AI Builder. So Ashish, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Rob. It's great to be back and nice talking to you again. Awesome. I love this conversation. And again, Absolutely. it's going to be great today. Absolutely. And I hope everyone's doing great. And just as Seth wants to know, I want to know where everyone is tuning in around the globe. So feel free to write in the chat. We'd love to hear from people around the world and just kind of get to know uh, each other. So Ashish, the last time we were on the show, we covered some of the existing capabilities within AI Builder some really great use case scenarios and an incredible demo. If you haven't checked that episode out, feel free to do so. It's absolutely amazing. But for those that are joining for the first time who either may have not heard about AI Builder, you know, don't know what it is, what can it do? Uh, maybe give like a quick high level overview of what it is. Um, so this way, you know, we kind of preface with that before we hop into some of the new capabilities. Absolutely, right. That makes sense. So, can just to level set people, um, AI Builder is the no code AI tool within Power Platform. So, Power Pat Platform is collection of Power Automate, Power Pages, uh, Power Apps, uh, PVA. And these are just the Power Tools which uh, are specialized to do a specific task. The bunch of horizontal capabilities like Dataverse, which is the data management layer, and then AI Builder, which is the AI layer for all of these Power Tools. Um, our goal always has been to keep it no code so that you don't have to write any piece of code to uh, bring latest and greatest AI. Uh, so far, we've been focusing on document uh, related technologies, text related technologies, and uh, images, right? Uh, there's also uh, a couple of models which uh, you can work with structured data as well. Uh, so that has been the case so far. Uh, but uh, with re some of the recent kind of announcements, we are bringing generative AI capabilities. And again, that's going to be a focus of conversation today. Absolutely. And we all know there's been a ton of hype around OpenAI, ChatGPT. And when we think about how fast it has propelled the industry, right? And I think it was common sense for us to incorporate it into our products at some point. Quick question for you before we hop into any of the, the, the demo and stuff. So how does this GPT model work? What kind of data sources is this model pulling from? Just so we can kind of level set where that's at, and then we can dive into some hands-on stuff so we can kind of get into the nitty gritty and, and see the capability in action. Sure, makes sense. Um, so the generative AI model that we are using here is Azure OpenAI's uh, large language model. Um, large language model is a foundation model. It's trained on wealth of internet data. So it's very good at discerning kind of uh, language and uh, generating language uh, in human-like form factor. So um, again, you can do multiple. It's a multimodal model. You can do multiple scenarios with it. Uh, you could summarize text. You can categorize. Uh, you can ask it to generate net new text. Um, all of the model that we are talking about today are kind of going to be kind of pre-built models. Uh, so you're not necessarily building a new model. You're just prompting the existing model to perform new tasks for you, right? A lot of times you can bundle in some context data for it to mm -hmm. kind of use it as anchor data or grounding data, we call it. And again, that's all that you need to do to kind of harness the power of generative AI in your own creation. And, and that's, that's the beauty of AI Builder. That's why I love it so much. Just the ability to just hop in and be able to take full advantage of these capabilities and it's it's absolutely incredible, Ashish. And I would love for us to see it in motion. So I know you have a demo planned to show us. So let's get into that and and see this new capability. Yeah, let's go to my screen share. Um, if uh, this feels familiar, this is kind of AI Builder uh, form factor or interface. If this is not um, anytime you go to Power Automate or uh, Power Apps on the yeah. sidecar here on the left side, you will see a bunch of capabilities. And then you'll see 
AI builder or all the AI models there as well. Uh, with an AI builder, you see um, Explore, which is all the AI capabilities that are available. Models will give you all your models or the models that you have been working on. And then uh, within Power Automate, there is a first class citizenship for uh, document automation scenarios. So again, if uh, just to orient people, uh, when you come to the Explore, you can see a lot of document capabilities, text capabilities, and so on and so forth. So in the text, you will see a new model that uh, has lit up uh, because of the uh, generative AI model and uh, Azure OpenAI integration. It's called text creation here. Uh, when we click it, we come to a playground-like experience. So our goal in AI Builder is always to simplify the user experience, right? And the persona uh, that we have is the no-code decision uh, citizen uh, developer persona. So we like to keep things lightweight and keep the focus on um, getting the job done, getting the task done. So uh, a lot of other playgrounds, if you would have seen, they let you tweak parameters, pick models. All of that clutter has been just taken away. And we bring you right in the center of uh, your work, which is uh, pick pick a template, pick an existing template. And we have populated with a bunch of templates. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, most of the time you will be prompting you will be telling the model what to do and checking out the response and this is your playground this is your experimentation place once you're happy with your experiment then you can take it into a power apps or a power automate uh, workflow there. awesome is it is it possible she's can you zoom in a little bit on the desktop area just so we can get like a little bit of a closer look into the template itself yep. there we go perfect Cool. So let's start with a few um, kind of warm up uh, activities. So let's one thing I'm going to start with is top of the stack, you will see summarize. Summarize is one of the most popular scenario when we're working with generative AI uh, because there's a ton of text out there and people want to summarize and get uh, stuff out from uh, unstructured data. Mm -hmm. So the, the templates are a starting point. They give you a base boilerplate kind of uh, prompt you don't have to stick to it uh, you can create your own prompt um, but in this case we'll, we'll start with what we have so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring a sample text or an email in this case right in this email mm -hmm. uh, let me paste here oops so the email talks about uh, some order details and stuff we don't know what it is right so we want to summarize this so in this case, what I'm going to ask the model is to uh, take away all of this and say, just summarize this for me in, in a paragraph or two. And I'm going to hit the test button. And uh, hopefully, the model generates a summary for me. Nice. So we see the model starts to create a summary of uh, whatever is in that email. Mm -hmm. And I can observe it. And I see if, if the, the response looks good, I can move forward. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to change the response a little bit because I see it talks about an order, and the order is missing in the summary. I would want to capture order if it is there. So I'm going to change the instruction and come back and say, hey, can you please add uh, order number if it is available? So with this, uh, it starts to again generate. And uh, the model is now uh, responding with order number. Sometimes things don't go your way, right? I mean, this is prompt. Uh, engineering and prompt engineering is like having a conversation with a person. You ask the right question, you get the right response. Sometimes you're not asking the right question, you don't get the right, right things like that, right? So it's an iterative process, and you might not get it right in the first time. The second time, I would always say keep trying and mm -hmm. keep speaking your prompt. So pretty much play play around with it till it really starts to fit what you're looking for, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So this is great. I can actually work with this, but what I would like to do also is. Uh, get in some more structure to this response, right? So I come to the end of uh, this, and I say, hey, generate uh, the response in a given format. In the format, it's give me order number and then give me summary, right? So let's see if this works. And I'll explain what 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 is it actually doing. Mm -hmm. um, when we are doing prompt engineering, a lot of times you will see um, the prompt goes first, and then the context data or grounding data or supporting data then goes next, right? But it's a free form kind of text. You can give some instructions at the top, and then you can give some instructions at the bottom as well, right? So what I've done is I was happy with the outcome that it was generating, but I wanted a little bit of formatting. Mm -hmm. So I went towards the bottom of the prompt and say, hey, 
I love what you're give, giving me, but just give it in this format so I can work with it a little bit uh, better and it's a little bit more structured for me. If I'm sending this to a support staff or somebody, right, they can easily grab the, uh, the order number and then they can look at the summary and do some, something with it. Absolutely. So and then, hmm. go ahead, go ahead. No, so that that's um, a summarization. And again, there are a bunch of other things we, that we could talk about. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, complaints a little bit later. Um, mm -hmm. Go into the flow because I have a flow created, which is all about complaints. We'll do that right then. But go ahead. You did you have a question? No, I was just saying like it's it's interesting to see like the same way that AI Builder pretty much prompts different types of actions to take, right? And this is just another way of showcasing how easy it is to use, right? Like not knowing where to start sometimes is difficult, but giving the user the ability to kind of identify what they might need, right? And then be able to create the instructions and prompts is like the user interface for AI Builder just continues to amazes me. And this is just another prime example of that. So absolutely love it. So with that, let me uh, take you to uh, Power Automate and show how power of this can be used uh, in, in automation. So what I have here is a uh, flow pre-created uh, and do is we're trying to automatically respond to a customer complaint right so we see a ton of scenarios where customer complaints are coming to a shared mailbox or, or some other form factor mm -hmm. and you want to quickly respond to your customers and uh, kind of address their complaints right so in this case what i've done is i've created um, uh, a trigger every time an email comes to me uh, and then you can specify whatever criteria. I just picked an easy criteria. The subject filter is demo and complain. I want to address it, right? Mm -hmm. But you can imagine that this could be something else. That could be a shared mailbox where you are uh, observing the incoming emails. What I've also done is um, I've added a, a step called uh, HTML to text. A lot of our emails are HTML content, and they have a lot of HTML text to it. Remember, the token window of uh, the model is limited. Right, about mm -hmm. 5,000 characters. So the more stuff we kind of pack in it, which is not relevant, uh, we're using important uh, token space that otherwise we could use for generation of the content. Right. So what I'm trying to do is strip away all the HTML content uh, from the email body and just preserve the text. That way, I can give the GPT model my body of text, and uh, it can then use that to respond or generate the response. So that's that next step, uh, and this is where the next uh, or the, the magic happens, right? Magic happens, right? <laughs> so I've added the um, create text with GPT model. The way you discover it, if you go to add actions, um, you should uh, when you search for AI builder or GPT, you should see a new action light up. So in this case, we already have it here, so we'll skip that step. So it's just so, like any other AI builder model, right? Like you're creating Power awesome. Automate flow, going through the same processes, and then you hop into this, and then the create text with GPT action is just ready to go and ready to use. Okay. Beautiful. So right now we've pre-populated with something, right? But uh, we can go into uh, create more. And so just here, right? I feel this is unique to this model and we have done and experimented it for the first time. What we've done is we've created a prompt engineering interface right inside Power Automate, right? So when you hit create uh, prompt, you will see a prompt engineering experience, much like in the export page, just pop up within uh, Power Automate. Mm -hmm. What you can do here is you could do, you don't have to go to uh, the explore page, do your experimentation, bring your prompt here. You of course can do that. There is copy option. You can bring your prompt here. But if you start within Power Automate itself, you can do that experimentation right here. You don't have to leave that space. So for example, what we're trying to do here is we're saying, hey, anytime, uh, or you get generating a response to a given text, uh, be humble and apologetic in your tone, uh, be creative in your response, right? Always restate the problem so that you're uh, kind of telling the user that we hear you and mm -hmm. we acknowledge your problem and then uh, give them uh, a brief about how we are gonna deal with it, right? So before I send this to my customers, I would always wanna test it, right? So what I've done is I've brought in a couple of example emails. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy a uh, body of an email, a standard kind of complaint text. Email. So for example, if I drop it here, this talks about, hey, I bought something, I'm disappointed, and all of that, right? So we hit tech, test here. And we should see a reply, right? So the response is, we apologize for inconvenience and experience. 
with this product and we understand uh, that you're not enjoying it or whatever and uh, we'll, we'll process your refund if that was the ask right or that's your mm -hmm. uh, your business action right so you can customize right what is your business action how you want to address a complaint in the prompt and based on that the model generates something you feel happy with it if you if you like what it is generating and you feel this will generalize well to most of your complaints or your product complaints that you can just pick this model and bring it back here right in this case we have already done this so we'll ignore that what we have done is you'll see we've replaced the sample text that we were experimenting with mm -hmm. a dynamic content and that dynamic content is the body of email right so anytime uh, an email comes in we have stripped off all the html we have taken all the text and that becomes your uh, automation thing. Well, what I also want to talk about quickly is uh, before we run this is the human agency aspect, the approval aspect, the human in the loop aspect of it. Probably one of the most important aspects, honestly. Like this, right. is, this is incredible. Especially for two uh, reasons. I, a, this is an automation workflow, right? Yep. You might be automatically responding to all your customers. Uh, so you want to have some human uh, oversight on it. Mm -hmm. And also, since it's AI-generated content, you want to be very sure what you're responding to your customers. Right? So what I've done in this case is I've picked up a, a, a start and wait approval step, uh, which has a couple of kind of states. Uh, I'm sending it to, to a person. You can send it to a group of people or whoever. Uh, and then I'm uh, picking up all the text that is getting generated. I have the original content here. So the reviewer is getting all the information that they need, right? He is the AI generated piece. He was the original uh, customer problem who, the, who was the customer and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Once um, that is approved by the, um, the human observer or human uh, uh, oversight, uh, then you can send that uh, email back to your customer, right? So that's the flow. So we'll save it and we can actually take it for a spin. So what we see here now is um, the flow has executed and it has paused at the place where it is waiting for a human approval, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to approvals here. And I see that one minute ago, I have a new approval, right? I can of course just click and approve, but what I wanna do is I wanna check what's, uh, what's waiting for my approval. So it gives me here is the AI generated response. Uh, it's going to John Doe and there is the content, right? And it also tells me uh, who created this initial uh, email and then just what was the complaint. If I'm happy with all of this, I can just quickly go and say approve and uh, confirm. And once I click that approve, it goes back to the flow and uh, We'll see the rest of the flow gets executed then. Yeah. Approval went through, but no, I think honestly, she's first of all, incredible demo um, showcasing the new technology. I mean, I'm super, super excited of where AI Builder is and where it's heading with this new capability as well. So this is just a perfect kind of glance into what this world is going to look like. I think real quick question before we wrap up is how can people currently get their hands on it? Is it available for everyone? And I guess a shot in the dark of when we may see it globally available for for the world to use and try out. Absolutely. So today the uh, capability is available as a gated preview in US only. So if you go to your uh, uh, US subscription or US environments in Power Automate or Power Apps, you will see a sign up in product sign up experience where uh, you can just sign up for this capability. So again, folks who are in US can. Um, latch onto it, sign on to it, and we're, we're gradually kind of approving everybody who is trying to come in. Uh, we're working super hard to expand it beyond US. Uh, it'll take a while, uh, but that's something that we are locked on and focused on that how, how can we expand to other regions and bring this capability to everybody. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, Ashish, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us again. And I'm looking forward to us working together in the future. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more AI builder content to come. But thank you all for joining and we'll see you guys soon. Thank you.